Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching? With authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. From the back of the synagogue came a sound so gut-wrenching, so piercing, so unnerving, that everything happening that morning came to a dead stop. In the silence where a pin drop could have been heard. The sounds of a tormented man rang out over the crowd. The crowd that was now staring, peering over each other to try to get a better look at what was going on. Everyone's blood ran cold when this man screeched an otherworldly scream that sounded like pain and madness all at the same time. Up until this point, all anyone could do was listen to this new rabbi named Jesus of Nazareth, speaking speaking from the scriptures in ways they had never really heard before. All the other rabbis and scribes and teachers played it safe when they spoke to people, but Jesus, Jesus had new ideas and new ways of talking about them, and new ways of doing life. Everyone was talking about him all over town, but that all came to a halt this morning when this man cried out. Scripture says he was a man in an unclean spirit. He was dealing with something supernatural, and apparently it was out of his control, and it or they, spoke to Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus? Have you come to destroy us? While possession was something first century Jews believed in and pretty much accepted as a part of life, I dare say that this guy caught some folks off guard. I mean, in the synagogue, on the Sabbath, this unclean, offensive, unnerving situation. No one expected to see this happen in church. We don't often deal with things like this in our churches these days. If we're honest, we don't even deal with things like this outside of church. But for first century Jews, the supernatural was an accepted part of life. Things happened that you couldn't explain, and it wasn't a big deal for people to attribute those things to spiritual forces, both good and evil. So it wasn't much of a big deal that this man was possessed. The big deal was when and where it happened. The Sabbath is a sacred time for Jews. To a large degree, the Sabbath is the original reason why we gather even today at a special time and a special place set apart to worship God and to be with each other. And in the middle of what was supposed to be holy, you have this really intense experience that brings you face to face with normally unseen spiritual forces. I mean, most churches get bent out of shape if kids talk too loud during church or if the right hymns aren't sung or if someone new shows up and, God forbid, sits in the wrong pew. In some ways, 
we put boundaries around this time and place called church. And to a degree, it's understandable. We want it to be special. We want to differentiate what happens here from what happens normally. Unfortunately, one of the things that sometimes happens is that we end up differentiating church so much that it becomes inaccessible to others who don't know or maybe don't understand what's going on. And what's even worse is that separation and differentiation, if we're not careful, can lead us to compartmentalize our experience of, of God to this single special day of the week when we take God out of a little box and spend a little time hanging out and then we put him back in and the rest of the week is ours and that time with God and that act of worship we were a part of fails to even come close to making an impact on the overall way we live and interact with the world around us. We've got it all under control. It's nice and pretty and it only lasts about an hour or so and then we get to go have lunch and take a nap. I imagine that there weren't very, very many people in Capernaum taking naps that day after synagogue. It probably ruined everybody's fried chicken dinner. I mean, who can eat after that? All anyone could talk about or think about was what had happened that day in church. And the news about Jesus and what he did spread like wildfire across the whole region of Galilee. After the unclean spirit interrupted the normal goings-on and spoke to Jesus, Jesus' reply was simple. Be silent and come out of him. It's the only thing we see Jesus saying in the story, one line. After that, the unclean spirit came out of the man who was thrashing and convulsing as a result. And can you imagine his relief? I often wonder why this guy was even there in the first place at the synagogue, but then it dawned on me this week while I was preparing for this talk. What if this man, struggling with this crazy experience he probably didn't understand, fearing for his life with the last shred of a grip on reality and control of his body fading away, managed to direct his feet to travel in the direction of Jesus, fighting the influence of this unclean spirit the whole way. What if this was his only hope of being delivered and he came to the only person he knew would know what to do? I can almost see his face after that spirit left him, exhausted, breathing heavy, and looking up at Jesus and managing a smile. I have so many questions about this story. I could preach three or four sermons about it, really. And today there is only so much time. So this is where God's grace is obvious to me in what we see happening. The church is designed to be a place where we come when we are down and out, not the place where we feel the most uncomfortable. Meeting together at Christ's table should be the great equalizer. We gather together because we have encountered a love that has changed everything for us and the only thing we can do is keep giving it away, just like Jesus keeps giving himself away. Down through the ages, when the church has been at its best, we often see it comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable, reminding us that we've, we've all fallen short, that we're all broken and in need of redemption and that embracing that redemption is a process and it never really ends. Well, this isn't a particularly popular idea and 
Sometimes it offends people. But when we, as people and as a church, forget our brokenness and our need for redemption, often what replaces it is a vain sense of ownership and entitlement that usually sends those who would look for hope among us running in the other direction. Maybe that was the big issue that morning in Capernaum. And maybe that's one of our big issues today. We, we get uncomfortable when we are reminded of our brokenness. We get uncomfortable when we are reminded just how out of control we are. We get nervous when Jesus acts like who he said he was and starts setting people free. Because when we get set free, we have to decide how we are going to live, how we're going to respond to God, and how we are going to help others experience that same freedom. And that is not easy or simple. And it requires us to get our hands dirty and punch holes in the walls of our comfort zones so that the light of Christ can shine out to open the doors wide and walk into unknown territory with hope. So what are you possessed with today? It doesn't have to be an unclean spirit. Maybe it's depression or anger, apathy, resentment. Maybe you've come to Jesus today at the end of your rope and all you can do is cry out, Jesus of Nazareth, what have you to do with me? Let me be the first one to say that Jesus is in the business of restoring people. You might feel like you ruined any chance of having a life of peace and of purpose years ago, but I believe that the love of God covers you where you are and calls you to release yourself into it, to fall back on it and start walking the path of restoration that's been there all along. We who are a part of this institution called the church need to recognize and understand that the church, the body of Christ, is the place for unclean spirits. Because it's here that we encounter Jesus, not in a building, but coursing through the lives of those he has redeemed. We couldn't keep him in a box if we tried, but if we succeed in thinking we have it all figured out and that the world has to come to us to get at him, then we might as well put a lock on the door. Thankfully, Jesus doesn't let us off the hook that easy. Amen. Mm -hmm.